Hello, my name is Monique Zanz, and this is Wake Up. Wake up to your purpose, wake up to your passion, and wake up to your greatness. In each episode, I connect with amazing people who have been willing to dive into the challenges that they were presented with in order to create incredible success, contribution, and impact. These are people who have faced fears, overcome obstacles, relentlessly pursued their dreams, and are here to share their story. Welcome to the show and get ready to wake up. I am thrilled to invite a very special guest. His name is Thomas R. Williams. And the way that I met Thomas is a very dear friend of mine, Miss Laura Holloway. She is a previous volleyball player and athlete, an NC2A athlete. So she surrounds herself with people that are ambitious people, people making a difference on the planet. And part of this show is all about how we encourage people to wake up. So Thomas has done that in many different ways. I'm going to share just a little bit of your bio, Thomas, and then I'm going to invite you to share a little bit more about who you are and some of the ways in which you have learned to wake people up. So to begin with, he's a published author, a public speaker, a guest lecturer, and a TV sports analyst and NFL player engagement ambassador. And one of the things that I love about Thomas is that he has this motto called dream, dare, do. And you know, when you're working with children, when you're working with young adults, when you're working with players in any kind of a sport, part of that understanding that there's the dream that you're going for, and then what you're daring to accomplish, to achieve, to go beyond your limitations, and then what you do about it to actually accomplish that. That's such a great framework and an easy way to remember the things that are required to go out and make an impact in the community, in society, and in the lives of every individual that you speak to, because everybody has some sort of a dream. And even though someone may have along the way taken that dream or seem to have taken the dream away from them, when you begin to inspire them, you can really encourage that dream to come back. So I'm excited to have you as a guest here, Thomas, and to learn a little bit more about who you are and how you help people foster that dare, do, dream attitude. Thank you so much for having me this morning. You are so welcome. It's a thrill. So um, that was just a, a great segue into uh, what we're going to talk about this morning. And I love about waking up because, you know, sometimes we get up in the morning when our alarm clock goes off or when the sun kind of creeps through the window and we think that we, we're awake. But actually to be uh, awake in, in my mind is when we're actually living authentically through our purpose and living the life of our dreams. I mean, everybody is uh like you said is, is passionate about something but sometimes in in our life we we sometimes either get deterred or maybe we've been told that we're not able or we're not qualified to do that certain uh task or accomplishment and so um like you said a little bit about me is i originally grew up in a small town in northern california called vacaville went to high school there and uh because i was blessed enough with a, a physical talents and abilities so to speak uh, I got a full ride athletic scholarship to play at USC, uh, where myself and my Trojan teammates won two national championships and three Rose Bowls. Uh, there's there's still one game that kind of cringes, makes me cringe a little bit when we played the University of Texas and they beat us in the in the Rose Bowl, 41 to 38. But you know, you live, you learn, and you move on. Uh, when I graduated in 2008 with a degree in sociology, uh, I was blessed to actually live my biggest dream up to that moment, which was to play in the NFL. And so I had an opportunity to play in the NFL, uh, worked my tail off from the time I was a little itty bitty boy till the time I was 23 and played in the NFL for five years. And unfortunately, I suffered a career ending neck injury, which at that moment, I thought my life was basically over yeah. because everybody had told me, well, what are you going to do next? You know, it's time to wake up and smell the coffee. And now life really begins. And so for me, kind of slipped into a little bit of a depression mode or stage, if you will. And I remember telling myself that I can still play football. The only thing is, is I just won't be able to tackle people. And so that's kind of what I do now is I, I still play the game of football as, as a middle linebacker. When I played, my job was to get the calls from the defensive coordinator and then communicate them to 10 other people who are on the football field, trying to get them to understand what is possible, even if the score doesn't dictate what we're trying to do. And so now as a motivational speaker, as a guest lecturer, and, and, and as a TV analyst, I'm doing the same thing, just communicating to whether it's one person or it's 2,500 people and everywhere in between. Beautiful. Well, here's what I love about you also. 
you know, there's this positivity to you. So you can have a life and a career ending injury, right? And first of all, part of right. your attitude is going to really impact your healing. That's my experience, my spiritual practices, everything that I do in my business and my life. It indicates that your attitude has a lot to do with the outcome of your healing, the outcome of your impact and the outcome of what impacts you. So Right. For everybody to know, part of why you've been able to be so successful and take this injury into your life and actually use it as a catapult for how you teach and train people to look at the lens of their life, I think is a fascinating right. way to look at life. And, and I would say probably one of the ways in which you do wake people up, because how many times do we have not even a career ending injury? So, you know, we have someone that hurts our feelings. We have a difficult breakup. We lose a pet. We lose a loved one. And all of a sudden, everything in our life looks like it's different and over. We let it potentially run us in a way. And it doesn't necessarily foster who we are and how we can make a difference because of going through that. I acknowledge you for having gone through a very difficult time in your life, but then taking that and saying, look, the world is telling me that it seems like things are over and did I really prepare ahead of time and was I ready for something like this and beyond football had I thought what was going to be beyond football because at 23 one thinks I'm going to have a long 10 15 year career ahead of me so the question for you is how did you manage to shift that attitude into what was possible rather than listening to the people around you yeah that's a great question and you're absolutely right from the time I was a little kid I been able to harness pain and actually turn it into power. Just we all have different stories and different things happen at different stages of our lives and we can either go left or right and left could be uh, to give up, to stop um, and to uh, give up hope, so to speak. And for me, just really being able to harness it and um, transfer it into good and positivity. At 27 years old, what I did was is I had to go introspectively into my own being and say, what is it about the game of football that I actually loved? And after doing the insane, intense amount of work on myself, I found out that it wasn't even about the game of football in itself because I don't really like running into people and I don't like people running into me, but it was the accomplishment. I'm, I'm literally addicted to achievement. And I remember when I was in high school and everybody told me the statistics of how many kids go from high school to college, college to the NFL. And I've just found out recently that that number is 0.07% will actually play in a, um, a regular season game from college. And so obviously the number's smaller coming from high school. And when they told me that number, I said, that's it. I got it. That's something that I want to shoot for because it's almost impossible. Right. And so for me over my life, I've literally just loved the chase and the pursuit and the journey of all things that I myself sometimes don't even think that I can do. And that's something that wakes me up constantly every single day and doesn't allow me to hit the snooze button on my alarm or want to sleep in and just lay there on the couch because there's a lot of athletes who transition from whether it's high school sports, college sports, or professional sports, and they don't know what to do with the rest of their life because they've been Thomas the football player for so long that they don't know how to transition. And so for me, it was, oh, you mean to tell me that I can be a great entrepreneur, a great businessman as well, that the only thing I need to do is I need to identify one, the transferable skills that I embodied on the football field and just apply them in a completely different sector. That was my whole love of pursuing the game of football. It's the NFL. It's the top. You can't get any higher. Now you can go to different dimensions, right? You can win a Super Bowl. You can go to the Pro Bowl, um, Hall of Fame. But as far as the level, you can't get any higher than that. So I was able to cross that off at 23. And so I just kind of made it my life goals to just start crossing off the things that I wanted to do. I mean, that was the, the NFL experience, I think, was such a great learning experience from the fact of, we all live and we all die. We just don't know when. And so for me, I was like, mm, I think I want to do a little bit more. And then I just want to see how many I can do. How many can I cross off? When I, when I sit there and take my last breath, how many of the, the things that I wanted to do, how many am I able to, to cross off? Excellent. Well, and what I'm also excited about is that, you know, not everybody's going to be born with this incredible talent. Not everybody's going to be born with necessarily even the drive and the momentum and that fire that you, you talk about that you have. 
but I do believe that you can inspire yeah. and encourage and you can cultivate it in people. And it may not end up at, at the level that you achieved, but the way that now use what you achieved and use the application of every step along the way had a lesson associated. And every yes. lesson had an outcome. So there was either, either a challenge that you had to overcome as a result of that lesson, or there was a success that you had that fostered and bred more confidence, more success. Yes. So you're the, this walking person. And you can imagine how many football players are just little boys' idols. Yeah. So what a little boy doesn't know is, well, what is the work ethic that's required? And what is the follow through that's required? And you, I love how you keep saying, like, from a little boy, I knew this. Mm -hmm. And so... And I would just tell our audience, like, it's not even that you necessarily have to know. There are some of us from a little girl, I also knew the path I was going to take. But there are many people who are constantly living their life looking for the path. Right. And if you begin to look at the lessons you've learned along the way, that can also begin to formulate your path. Okay, I learned how to be resilient at a young age. What am I using that for in my life now? Why would I have learned that? Yeah. Yeah. I learned how to be compassionate at a young age, or I learned how to listen closely at a young age, otherwise I'd get in trouble. And all these little skills, if we begin to look at them, all of a sudden we know how to, okay, now I can apply that for someone else. I can yes. apply that to my football. I can apply that to my entrepreneurship, my mindset. In your words, in your specific way, what are some of the key points that you feel like, even though you had that drive, when you're teaching those young men and those young athletes how to go out in the world and use their skills and use their mind, what are some of the key points that you want to leave them with? So over, over your right shoulder, there's a little block that says, do what makes you happy. And for, I, I think that that's amazing because that's what people ask me. And it doesn't matter if they're eight years old. It doesn't matter if they're 80 years old. Some people go through life and are, are still trying to figure out, well, why am I here? Right. It's, it, and it's a, it's a great question. And I think it's a simple question, but a um, very complex answer. So what I encourage them is I ask them the simple, simplest question of what makes your soul dance? And for, for them, they just light up because at that moment they're like, I have it. Right. And so it's all about the things that are, are relative. Maybe it's not for uh, the little boy or the little girl or the grown man or the grown woman to play in the NFL or be a cheerleader or um, a CEO of a company. But there's something inside of them that now we can connect on because they know exactly what I'm talking about as I'm describing the experience. So that's where I tell them to begin. Now that's the big picture. And as you know, let's just reverse engineer backwards. Now let's just, let's figure out the, the, we just started at 10, we'll go to nine, we'll go to eight, and then we'll just build this whole kind of pathway and journey for ourselves, giving ourselves benchmarks. Because as you know, some of the, the difficult times come when, like for example, me, I, I said at seven years old, I wanted to be a professional athlete and it didn't happen until I was 23. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of time that, that went by and I could have been extremely easily discouraged. Um, but there was other small benchmarks. It was, let me make the varsity football team as a sophomore. Okay, let me get all American. Let me get all state. Let me get a scholarship offer. Let me get, so I was giving myself these small little bench points and check-ins so that it would kind of keep me hungry and keep me going. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to the South of Florida and they have dog tracks and they, they'll race the dogs around and around and around. And I, I thought it was very interesting the first time I ever went. I said, why are these dogs running so fast? Like, why are they not getting off, you know, track? And why are they not running wherever they want to? And somebody pointed out to me and said, there's a little rabbit on the inside part of the track that's going around, 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 around. And the dogs are chasing this rabbit. And so I would, I always encourage anybody who's in the audience is what is your rabbit? What are you, what are you really chasing? And it's, it's something that people can identify when, when you really ask them. But when you, when you kind of, encourage them and you let them know that it's okay to have permission to dream, then that's the times when they say, well, there is this thing that I always wanted to do. And you just ask them another question. Well, have you done it yet? Yeah. And when they say no, and it's like, okay, let's get that one. And then let's go to another one because it's so addicting to accomplish what you yourself always wanted to and what you said you wanted to do. It's not about the result or the outcome. I'm sure there's things that you've accomplished in your life where at the moment you accomplished it, it was, oh, that was, that was it? Like, yeah, like what's next? 
you know? And, and so you, you look back at that time, you're like, wow, look at all of this that went into making that one singular moment. And so that's what I really get people to try and focus on too, is understanding. And we've all heard it that the, the, the journey is the destination because once we get to that moment, it's done. Well, and what's so cool about that is there's all these different milestones that you're talking about. And so often people are trying when they're reaching towards milestones to avoid failure. Right. They know that on the journey toward the milestone, the more we fail, the more we learn what we need to accomplish, learn or know, or who we need as a resource, or what book we need to pick up. But right. sometimes our external reality, the, the forces that play, it's their, their feedback, the comments, the um, disregard of, a, of something that we thought was great, all of a sudden we give that more meaning and more value than our own experience. Right. So when you were going through different times, I wonder, were there times where even though you had the milestone, okay, let me first make the varsity team, let me then mm -hmm. do this. Were there ever a time where you weren't sure what the next milestone was, someone you went to to set it for you or to help you discover it, and then did that same someone or did you create a body of people or a support system to help you arrive at that outcome? The first part is um, there were, there were a lot of distracting times, uh, whether it's you're a 16 year old uh, boy on the varsity team and you're hanging out with seniors in high school, right? So there's those distractions, but then there's also the obstacles. Uh, I've been injured several times where I literally had to take time away from the game and then there's the fear and the panic. And then you start to ask yourself the question of, is this for me? Am I on the wrong path? Am I supposed to go do something else? Because we, we have this preconceived notion of the success that we want to acquire and accomplish, it's going to be easy. And it's also in a forward direction. Like if I yeah. go linearly forward, then I should achieve what I set out to go. Right. Without understanding that there's, there's going to come walls and the walls aren't to separate you from your vision or your ultimate goal. It's literally to separate you from the other people who say they want it. Um, and they actually don't really want it. They just like the idea of it. Right. Do you also agree that it separates them also potentially from there's something I need to learn and go get. But if I just keep going after a milestone and achieving and achieving, achieving, I won't expand my horizon of that there's different methodologies or ways to get after the same result. Yes, because there's not the way, there's a way, right? And, and so how you achieved your level of success, and let's say I wanted you to mentor me in doing that, and you just said, well, Thomas, this is the way. Well, maybe the way that you went isn't the same way that's going to work for me, but that is a way. And as I was going along my journey, there were people that came into my life and said, okay, now let's start at even smaller goals. Because I've, I've, I've prided myself on being able to see the big picture, but also crystallize the little um, tasks or object objectives that I needed to accomplish on the way. And then I had to even minimize some of those where it was, okay, just focus on getting on the team. Like when I got to the NFL, I just had this, I was like, I was here, I'm in the NFL and I want to be a starter and I want to be the face of a franchise and I want to get a multi-million dollar contract. Well, then I had to start even smaller and say, well, why don't I just focus on one making the team? Then let me focus on getting 10 plays a game. Then let me focus on playing the entire 16 game season. So then even breaking it down even smaller because we can always split an atom, as I say, right? There's always the square root of the square root. And so trying to get to the core of it, just like anything else, an apple or um, a tree, you know what I mean? There's always the seed. There's a methodology in mindset. Um, it's called NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And yeah. it's the terminology of chunking it down. Yep. So, and in my master's program, we would call it three foot tosses. So you imagine that if you had a horseshoe and you had three stakes, one was three feet out, one was nine feet out, and one was 21 feet out. You try to hit the 21 foot, maybe one out of 10 times you'll hit it, if that. You try right. to hit nine foot, maybe you'll get two to four. 
but you try to hit the three foot, by the time you lean over a little bit, you're looking at about a foot and a half, you're going to hit it 100% of the time. Rather try for the big things, which I encourage people, try for the big shot, but yeah. don't rely on the big shots to get you to the end goal. You think about it, there's so many different pit stops or rest areas along the way, and you're like, wow, if I would have just gotten to this point where I am in my life, 10 years ago, then you wouldn't have learned what you've learned in that, that 10 year span. So for me, it's the gift is the curse. The curse is the gift, so to speak. And the teams that I was cut from in the NFL, I was so disappointed and down on myself at the time. But then understanding that I'm supposed to be around a multitude of people, I was able to connect quick. Like that was the lessons in that. Or whether it was learning new terminology on a Wednesday night, getting ready for a game on Sunday. So now that's a transferable skill, right? Being, being able to adapt quickly, being um, self-motivated. Like those are little tricks for me that I didn't know at the time until I finished playing in the NFL. And I was able to identify like, what are real skills in this world? Because I've been in this, this box of athletes for an extremely long time and everybody's pretty much the same. There's not too much difference of a high school player to another high school player, college and professional. So then when you get outside of that and you say, wow, I've accomplished this amazing feat that helps run a $12 billion a year entity. I'm sure that I can do well in whatever field I choose to go to next. And so understanding those transferable skills and that's, what one of the main focuses are and uh, columns in my player development program for the student athletes is helping them say, look, when you stop playing, you will be just as successful at whatever's next if you apply yourself the same way you did at sports. So you already have it in you. So now being able to draw from it and just transfer it into something else. And it doesn't have to be completely different or opposite, but you're good enough already. So just to summarize that, so if you took all those skills, you took all those lessons that you've learned, you've taken some of the application that you've had, particularly because of your injury, because of your way of coming to this awareness, right. what would you say that you are on the planet to do? What is your why, why you're here? I, I truly honestly believe that on July 28th, um, I was on an airplane coming back from Tampa Bay because that was my last practice, my last team, and I'm going through this whole process now. I'm just writing, 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 writing because I was so afraid. I wrote down, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? And why did the universe God allow me to experience this up until this point? And I wrote these words down and I'll never forget it, that I'm here on this planet to share with the world, how possible and possibilities are. And that's 100% the reason why I'm here. I'm here to um, help everybody understand, the ones who don't, of what is it that you wanna do and it is actually possible to do exactly that. Not somewhere in the ballpark, not somewhere in the general vicinity, but exactly that. And so that's why I'm, I'm here. Beautiful, I love that. I'm here to help people see to live a life through impossible possibilities. I love that. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. So then if that's why you're here to do it, then how, so you mentioned some of the programs that you offer. So just a quick little brief summary. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? How do you actually come to fruition of that on the planet currently? Yeah. So uh, inside my company, there's four different demographics that I work with and the military and their wounded warriors who are transitioning outside of the military is one of them. Uh, student athletes, whether it's at the high school, collegiate, or professional level. And then I have uh, my book titled Permission to Dream, which is for the middle school and the high school kids, and then the corporate uh, settings. And so it's just by asking the powerful, open-ended questions to people. So it's not, I have to tell you, because we, a lot of us in society, we want somebody else to tell us who to date, what job to take, what school to go to, what should I eat? Like, we want to be told. And so literally asking the question back to the individual of a powerful question of what does your average day look like? Okay. Are you happy with that day? Now, what would you like your day to look like? What is something you've always wanted to accomplish? So every single setting that I go into, there's a workbook. And so they get to answer the questions. Even though I'm talking to a mass, 
they get to answer the questions individually. And that's how I'm able to tailor it specifically to each person sitting inside of the audience. Like, have you ever gone to a conference or something? You're like, has this person lived with me before? Because I feel like they're talking to me, yeah. right? So that's, that's the experience that I've created. And so really asking those simple questions and letting people answer them because that's, that's why I'm, like I said, that's why I'm here. That's why I experienced what I did and whether I've been to the peak or the valley and everything in between of getting people to, and I like how you said it. I say acknowledge, activate, and apply. And so those are the three key steps that, that people acknowledge what you want to do, activate it, right? So now let's put it into motion and apply everything that you want to do. Beautiful. Well, my tagline to see your greatness, be your greatness and pay it forward. So everything you're sharing, once you master that yourself, once you see it yourself, once you learn how to be asked an open-ended question, then all of a sudden the information turns into knowledge, turns into your wisdom, and then you can do the same for others. So it becomes right. a stair step for the world to be able to offer that opportunity to each other. Wouldn't that be amazing? I love that. Wouldn't that be amazing if ever if the majority of this world took that same approach and said, well, I know what I'm going through isn't because I should be punished, but it's to show, uh, encourage others around me to see how I can and how you can as well. And just like you said, be it and then pay it forward. Like that is, that's amazing when you can take something and then that just doesn't even bring success alone. That brings fulfillment. Like, and, I can go all day about this, but I mean, that, that brings fulfillment to me to say, wow, here's somebody who's 20 years old and they're going to go through what I went through and I can tell them what I know now at 30 and I just save them hopefully five, six, seven years. Like, oh. Well, and you may also share them, you know, save them a perspective that misguides them off the track for years. Also. Right. Because when we live for other people's dreams and we don't, evaluate well that may be your dream but is it also mine right we lose ourselves to someone else's idea and then we go on a path for many many years often and then we live inside of that shame and that blame game which yeah. is just dif- de- de- debilitating place to be yeah and it's I, I i find that uh more common inside of um young males who maybe they share their father's last name and maybe their dad was, let's just say, dad went to USC and now they need to go to USC, but their heart is really telling them, go to UCLA. I know I'm not supposed to say that, but, you know, go to UCLA or, <laughs> or whatever it is, like you should play, you should be an athlete or, or dad owns an insurance company or dad is an entrepreneur is in real estate. And they kind of get swept up inside of I should do what's going to make dad happy as opposed to I'm going to do what's going to make me happy, which I'm going to now give my happiness to my dad in that example. So when you think about your, your wake up call, so yeah. I would say it sounds like you had more than one. So one of oh them was goodness. when I was a little boy and it was like, I was clear I was going to head not just to be an athlete, to be one of the best athletes. Yeah. So there was like a wake up to, I have a goal that's a big goal, so it's going to require some big ambition and some big lessons along the way. And then it seems like another wake up for you was at the point of arriving at that point, arriving at 23 and making the team and the 007 and like, wow, I had this dream. I did what I needed to do. I achieved the little milestones and here I am. And then the third one sounds to me like the moment the accident happened, you're flying home on that plane and it's like, now what? Oh no, yeah. now what? And yeah. so it seems like now we're coming into like the fourth wake up, which you're probably in the process of defining, but through the work that you're doing, you're seeing it. So if you were to kind of summarize those four places, what would you say is the, the message or the lesson for people into how they could apply that into their life? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, The first wake up was in sixth grade when my mom went to a parent teacher conference and he told her by the time I was 16, I would be a leader of a gang and end up dead. That was the first one. The next one was the, my ninth grade year when I got a 3.5 grade point average all the way from a 2.1 grade point average. That was a wake up call. So it's, it's, they're, they're not all negative. Some of them are good. 
Um, the next wake up call was when I received my first scholarship letter that, okay, this is actually getting closer. And after that was when I graduated from college and then going into the NFL. So I would like to summarize all of that by saying, and somebody actually told this to me recently, and I said, wow, that's what that means, huh? Said, things don't happen to you, they happen for you. And for me, when I say that, I mean that it's not all negative, it's not all good it's not it's it is exactly what what it is and learn from it i i, I think that uh, one of the books i'm reading right now is is having me or the reader identify what do you think is failing and for me the two things i think about failing in any situation or any circumstance is one is the absolute of quitting and giving up just quitting not shifting but just quitting and giving up period two is not learning a thing from every situation. To all to say that is learn what's going on, right? So self-awareness is one of the big top, hot topics right now of being aware of self, understanding self and what's going on. And so for me, it's in every situation, what happened? What could I have done to make it better? What should I be learning? So all of, all of, all of the above. Beautiful. Well, Thomas, it's been a pleasure to share with you today, to learn from you today. Thank you for taking us a little bit on the journey that you've been on. I think there's a lot of people that whether they're athletes or not, they still have that journey that they go through learning about who they are through the eyes of others and through the, their own eyes. And yeah. then hopefully they get to wake up to really seeing themselves and that the wake up call is big enough that they don't ever go backwards but not so big that they can't even see it. Right. I appreciate your journey. I appreciate your sharing, and I look forward to the next time we get to speak. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me on this morning. I really, really appreciate it. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Remember to wake up to your life, to your dreams, and to your passion. See you soon.